Greetings YouTube, my name is Melderon. If you have heard of me already, then you know that I'm a classic WoW advocate and content creator. If you don't know me, allow me to introduce myself. I've played World of Warcraft on and on since the late vanilla and then quit in Legion because I felt the game was on a downward spiral, digressing and becoming less and less of an MMORPG. And because of this, I've dedicated time and energy to advocate for the launch of Classic WoW since the Nostalgia shutdown back in 2016. So then you may be asking yourself, why does this classic fanboy care about Retail WoW and the future of Activision Blizzard? Shouldn't I just shut up and go play Classic? I'll admit, those are fair points, and maybe I should. But you see, I want Blizzard to succeed and to thrive. Okay, well, for admittedly selfish reasons, at least on the surface. If Blizzard does well, then Classic will continue to be supported, and perhaps even in time, expand to include the Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King, or maybe even vanilla expansions past next Ramus. But who am I kidding? I know this won't last forever. In time, the classic timeline will come to an end, one way or another. And then what? In reality, I don't think Classic itself will return Blizzard to its former glory. A re-release of a retro game cannot sustain and save Blizzard fiscally, especially with the company in its current state. However, what I think Classic's success can do is start a chain reaction within Blizzard itself, changing the philosophy of the company as a whole. And I think that if World of Warcraft can return to its roots, to the aspects that made it perhaps the greatest game ever made, then not only will it succeed, but all of Blizzard's intellectual properties will again become successful. Why? Because the culture of both Blizzard and its fan base will fundamentally change. WoW is the game, in my opinion, that really solidified Blizzard as an industry juggernaut. And I think WoW, in some form, can bring the company back from the brink. If we look back at the heyday of WoW, Based on subscriber number, the largest increase in subscribers and the all-time peak in subscriber number occurred during the classic era, that is, before the cataclysm. Now, I'm going to suggest something that may seem a bit crazy, but Blizzard, why don't you return to the formula as it was back then? We have the data to back it up. You were killing it. Now, I'm not saying just reboot the franchise and make Vanilla WoW remastered or something like that. All things progress and evolve. And I'll admit that some aspects of the current game aren't bad. What I am saying is that you should return to the core RPG elements. Make players want to log on. Provide them ways to make lasting friendships. Make them respect you again. And Blizz, I even made it easy for you. I made a checklist. Here are 10 things you can do to make World of Warcraft amazing again. But before I start, I want to note a huge inspiration for this video. If you haven't checked out MASH's video, World of Warcraft is garbage, an essay, I highly recommend it. He breaks down so many things that current WoW is doing wrong, and I just want to thank him for inspiring me to make this video. Alright, now let's get on to the list. Blizzard, it's time to create a lasting and meaningful community yet again. This means no LFR, no LFG, no sharding, no cross-realm mechanics. Vanilla and TBC were popular, in part because the server meant everything. Each one had its own story and its own character, leading to people knowing each other, for better or for worse. Ninjas were shunned, and good behavior was rewarded. LFR and LFG, while reducing the time it took to get into groups, ultimately killed the community aspect of the game. Finding a group forced people to interact. Time and time again, I've made lasting friendships by just grouping up with people for a dungeon or a quest. This aspect also works synergistically with dungeon design and difficulty, which I'll cover in a later point. If you have to strategize with one another, it means you are talking, and if you are talking, there's always a good chance you'll continue to talk, getting to know one another and sharing experiences. Furthermore, class identity in the form of unique buffs and abilities makes players come together to achieve a common goal. Nowadays, everyone has a CC or a self-heal. This means that you take away the ability for players to interact. Class homogenization not only simplifies the gaming experience, but it, in turn, has negative impacts on the community at large. LFR, normal, heroic, mythic, it's too much, Blizz. Rating should be something that people aspire to. It should be challenging. During the classic era of WoW, there was nothing more amazing than seeing someone ride into town with raid gear on. You drool and dream to venture into those raids yourself. Also, this may sound harsh, but if you don't want to put in the time to acquire pre-raid gear, get into a guild, farm or purchase consumables, and strategize, then raiding is not for you. Perhaps this is where Mythic Plus progression dungeons can really shine. Providing content that five friends can do to get their hands on some good but different gear instead of putting in hours to raid. This way you are still rewarding talent and commitment without neglecting raiders. 
just provide something for the player base to aspire to. I personally think two raid difficulties max should exist in the game because it provides some progression for higher level players. And moreover, dungeon and raid design should be challenging, requiring things like crowd control and resistance gear. Remember those? Also, dungeons should be immersive, taking a respectable amount of time to complete. I'm not saying every dungeon has to take three hours like BRD or Dire Maul, but an average length of an hour will make dungeons more meaningful. Epic should be rewarded for epic deeds. Not for AFKing through some island thing or war fronts or whatever you're giving them out for nowadays. And the same thing goes for legendaries. If you are a legendary player, then you should get one and only then. Give those players who put in the time and effort to raid, to do loads of PvP, to do other difficult endgame content, epics, and only those players. This will again make players aspire to be greater and to do more. It will make them put themselves out there. Also, Blizz, Titan Forging has to go. There should be no way, I repeat, no way, that someone doing normal raiding should get a better piece of gear than someone doing heroics can get. It doesn't make any sense. If people want higher eye level gear, then go to the next tier or difficulty. While we're on difficulty, gear from different raid difficulties should not just be reskins of one another. Give them unique names and appearances and maybe even stats so people know that someone is a heroic raider versus a normal raider. And finally, those one-off items, like the Skull of Impending Doom from Vanilla. They brought so much flavor into the game. Items like this add complexity and randomness into the world. In my opinion, nothing makes an MMORPG more engaging than epic bouts of world PvP. How many of you watching this remember Terran Mill vs. South Shore? Despite the frustration that it may cause, it made your faction band together, regardless of level, to defeat the opposing faction. It also made players interact, socialize, and build faction pride. And the good news is, there's really only one thing that you need to do to ensure it will happen. Remove flying mounts. The addition of flying mounts in the Burning Crusade had a devastating negative impact on world PvP. If max level characters can fly through and bypass the amazing world that your talented engineers and artists created, they will not raid cities. They will not gank lobbies. And I know how frustrating can it be to not be able to turn in your quest or get to that dungeon with your friends, but it fosters community and makes the world feel more real. In my opinion, this is a small price to pay for a sense of pride and camaraderie. Also, a healthy mix of instance and non-instance dungeons will encourage world PvP as well. A great part about well-made MMORPGs is that you feel like you get stronger with every level up. Not only that, but the leveling experience should be a significant part of the journey. Leveling is where the story unfolds. It's where you learn about the world, and it's where you get more accustomed to your class. I understand that expansions are smaller than the base game, but leveling itself should take a lot of time. You shouldn't be able to get the max level in a few hours. If that's the case, why level at all? Moreover, leveling should be rewarded. Your character should get stronger compared to the world around them. A big part of leveling back in the day was to go back to those NPCs, you know, those ones that would kill you over and over again, so you can now AoE them to oblivion or strike them down with one blow of your axe. And then there's talents. What Classic did well was provide talent points each level, making you decide on your build more frequently. Similar to a tabletop game like Dungeons & Dragons. Along with this, spell rank should be incorporated. A good way to add more complexity into the game will be to provide spell rank options so that players need to think about long-term consistency of their DPS or their healing. This can work synergistically with making resources like mana mean something again. You shouldn't end a fight with max resources. That's poor game design, Liz. Finally, elite monsters should be elite and require help and assistance from friends or passers-by. This will foster more community engagement. The world should feel dangerous. Transmogrification makes artists lazy. And more than that, it removes any sense of visual progression from the game. If someone attains the next highest raid tier, I want to see it right away. I want to know how much that player has put into the game. Great gear, regardless of how it looked, conveyed a message to the rest of the player base. This person earned that gear. And this, in my opinion, is much more important than looking cool or having matching sets of armor. If transmog is removed from the game, artists will strive and perhaps be emboldened to create better pieces of armor that not only make them sought after, but will make people remember each piece's name. Remember that? This is something that has been lost in current days. Going back to previous raid tiers or to older parts of the game makes the experience more expansive to the player. In classic, guilds would regularly venture back into old raid content to acquire buffs, gear out new guildies, or for certain items. 
This design ensured that all content remains relevant throughout the course of the expansion. Also, visiting older parts of the game for relevant quests and rewards makes the world feel vast. Currently, with each successive expansion, the older parts of the world seem entirely irrelevant, unless you want to farm rep or just go get some mounts or transmog items. However, I do want to commend Blizzard with their incorporation of the Time Walking Dungeons, which makes players visit older parts of the game. I think if you continue with this spirit, by incorporating the entire world into the evolving story of the game, it will make for a better gaming experience. I made a video a few months back comparing the storytelling mode of Classic Era WoW to the more current iterations of the game. One thing I think made Classic WoW unique was that the player was not the center of attention. They were not the hero or the main protagonist. Rather, they were but a cog in a great machine, a traveler, an adventurer. Also, I would recommend making the stories deeper, darker, and less in your face. Cutscenes do nothing but push the narrative directly into the player's face, not allowing them to experience the story on their own terms. Having everyone have the Ashbringer, or being the savior of Azeroth, is not only extremely immersion breaking, but it's lazy storytelling. When it comes to the story, less is more. Finally, I understand that it's hard to top Illidan or Arthas, but if you make an effort to create villains and complex plots, the players will be more engaged into the game, which will in turn make them want to play more. Try to rely on classic RPG and fantasy elements to evolve the Warcraft story into more believable topics. I know this point may seem a little counterintuitive, as since you pay for the game, you want your voice to be heard. However, bear with me for a second. What made the classic era of World of Warcraft enjoyable was that there were limited levels of player choice when it came to overall gameplay experience. I'm not talking about talents and gear here. If you're on a PvP realm, that meant you were flagged for PvP. No questions asked. I believe that the removing of realm type ultimately made the game less realistic and is counter to the essence of World of Warcraft. Letting a player engage themselves in PvP when they feel like it is not realistic and directly counters the faction war that is so integral to the game itself. Perhaps the number of realms should be lessened so that each realm feels like a home. Another point is that cross-faction and cross-realm communication via Battle.net integration and sharding ultimately destroyed the intra-server and intra-faction community feel. Removing choice and chances to break the immersion of the game will lead to a better experience in the long run. Also, loot systems should be set to group loot, no more personal loot. This is an MMO RPG, so any single player aesthetics should be heavily limited. The needs of the many, in this case the guild as a whole, or even the server, outweigh the needs of the one. Yup, you're reading that right. No more microtransactions, and this includes those damned character boosts. How can a player have ownership of their max level character if they just bought it? Not only that, new players will not have experienced the world. How can you play within the world of Warcraft and not know where the capital cities are, or where Outland is? I know these things have made you money, Blizz, but it doesn't foster a lasting experience with your player base. I fell in love with your games because I progressed through them and earned my keep, not because you just gave me things. Also forget these mounts and pets. They do nothing, it's just filler. They're crap. Not only that, but seeing someone mount up a 300 mounts is completely immersion breaking. How's that even possible? Where are they putting them? Instead, provide the players rewards that they want and they can earn. To sum up, I've seen the numbers, Blizz. You've made billions on these things. I understand that. But look at the community now. All the mounts in the world won't fix the state that you and WoW are in. Instead, focus on making content and rewards that people have to work for and have to work together for. People play MMOs for the experience, not to collect random things. Foster communities where lasting customers make your community healthy, rather than provide for people who just resub to get their hands on the flavor of the week. Okay. That's the list. I realize I'm asking for a lot here. These changes, if implemented, will severely fracture the player base that Blizzard has accumulated over the years. And I understand that these changes could hurt Blizzard even more at this point. However, if you do make these changes, Blizzard, one thing I can guarantee is that people will respect you again. And over time, those subs that you lost, those players who fell in love with the Warcraft universe and left heartbroken, will start to trickle back. I think many of you at this point I think the game is too far changed for Blizzard to make all these large-scale changes. And you know what? You're probably right. There's a significant part of me that thinks that the cancer has spread too far, and that it's time to pull the plug on Retail WoW. But maybe all this means is that it's time for Blizzard to think about a new IP, like World of Diablo, or World of Starcraft, 
Or maybe it's time for WoW to be reborn. Maybe it's time for WoW 2. I don't know. But what I do know is that Blizzard is at a crossroads right now. They need to make some tough decisions here. But I think the biggest question Blizzard needs to ask itself now is how do you want to be remembered? To borrow a quote from a great movie, Gladiator, what we do in life echoes in eternity. Blizzard, do you want to be remembered as the Roman Empire of the gaming industry? A juggernaut who ruled but ultimately fell apart and fractured due to corruption and instability, leading the gaming industry into the dark ages? Or do you want to be remembered as the Phoenix, rising from the ashes to be reborn and taking your place as the greatest gaming company of all time? All it will take is bravery, fearlessness, and strategy. Look back at what made you great. Look at the millions of people whose lives have been changed for the better because of your games. Remember the philosophies and ideas that made you great. And strive to create the games that will rock the very foundations of the gaming industry yet again. If you build it, Blizzard, we will come.